in the wastewater treatment plant. Hi, I'm Brad Butterfield, wastewater treatment plant superintendent, and I've been here for 15 years. Hi, my name is Rob Guider. I'm a wastewater treatment plant operator here at UC Davis. Uh, this plant was originally built in 1999 and came online in the year 2000. We've been through two expansions, one in 2008 and one in 2016. The average daily flow designed for this plant is 3.2 million gallons per day. When I first started, we processed about 1.9 million gallons a day. After the drought, uh, a few years ago and water conservation started at, on campus, we dropped down to about 1.5 million gallons a day. How does the wastewater get from campus over to the wastewater treatment plant? We have an array of lift, sanitary lift stations on campus and a bunch of gravity lines that feed what we call the influent pump station, which is next to the Bardian barn. From there, it gets pumped down Old Davis Road underneath the freeway and diagonally underneath the railroad tracks up to where underground near the lamppost. You'll see we have a little station that's a, what we call a flow meter. It's measuring the flow instantaneously coming in from, the, from campus. We're required by state to measure both the influent and effluent flows on a 24-hour basis. From there, <clears throat> the wastewater enters the plant and goes through what we call a mechanical screen, which removes any debris or rags which could damage the processes as we go on. And if you look in the dumpster, you'll see an example of the screenings that we remove. From there, the wastewater goes to what we call our secondary treatment, our biological treatment. Our biological treatment removes what we call biological oxygen demand, which is the carbon ingredient in the sanitary wastewater, in the raw wastewater, and also other nutrients such as ammonia, nitrates, and phosphorus. So we'll move on down to the oxidation ditch and I'll explain more of that process. Hi, we're at our secondary treatment, our biological treatment, where the, and what, the way we describe this is uh, extended aeration treatment. We do this using what we call an oxidation ditch. Our oxidation ditch consists of a three ring orbital oxidation ditch. The way it works is the, um, we combine the raw wastewater with what we call return activated sludge, which creates what we call a mixed liquor suspended solids the mixed liquor suspended solids is introduced into normally ditch number three, rotates clockwise, overflows into ditch number two, ditch number one, and then overflows into the center. The center, from there, it goes on to what we call clarification. The way that the oxidation works is the mixed liquor is comprised of a population of miscellaneous bacteria and microorganisms such as amoebas, rotifers, um, just an array of population that remove the BOD and the nutrients. Um, you'll notice on top that we have what we call disc aerators. The disc aerators serve two purposes, to keep the mixed liquor moving and to, what we, and to eject what we call dissolved oxygen. The dissolved oxygen is consumed by the bacteria and microorganisms to remove the BOD and nutrients, which were required by state. Um, as we go up on top, you'll notice that the mixed liquor is a brown colored mixture. Uh, it kind of looks like uh, the river from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. That's how I describe it to other tours. Um, you'll notice that there is no smell, although you can't smell through the video. But, you'll, but uh, we have a very healthy running oxidation ditch. So let's go on top and we'll take a look. We're up on the oxidation ditch. As you'll see, the mixed liquor it's a brownish color. We have a nice clean layer about an inch on top. You'll see these nice dark lines in the mixed liquor. This is what we call flocculation. When we see this, we know it's healthy. 
and it'll the mix liquor will settle in the next process of clarification. It'll give us that nice fine separation. We control the dissolved oxygen going in by changing the speed of the aerators. We have a dissolved oxygen sensor, which you'll see right in front of me. It's measuring the dissolved oxygen instantaneously in the mixed liquor. As the demand for the dissolved oxygen goes up, the aerators will speed up. As the dissolved oxygen level goes down, the demand goes down, the aerators will slow down. But we have to keep them running in order to keep the mixed liquor moving at all times. All right, so my name is John DeKean. I'm a uh, senior operator here at the wastewater treatment plant. And as a gentleman over at the oxidation ditch I've just showed you, our uh, wastewater flows from the oxidation ditch over to our clarifiers here, where it comes up into the middle of our clarifiers, and there's a uh, baffle that goes around the outside of the ring where it comes in at. And as the water comes in from the baffle, yeah, all the heavy solids will settle to the bottom where we have a collector arm over on this side here that goes, at, it's the whole length of the clarifier, which is about 75 feet in diameter, and it collects the solids down at the bottom and pumps it back to our oxidation ditch and it mixes with our uh, influent that comes in from the beginning of campus. And as the heavy solids settle to the bottom, the clear water comes up over the top of our weirs over here. And as it goes over the weirs, it looks like this. So we got rid of all that chalky, chocolate milk uh, looking water that you saw at the oxidation ditch. And this is what we're producing is the end result. So this here is our water from the oxidation ditch. And this is kind of how our clarifier would work. So our lab takes samples from the ditch every day. And this, our water eventually is going to have to settle at the bottom. And that's kind of what the clarifier will do. It takes its course. And after, you know, a good 30 minutes or so, all these heavy solids will be built up down here at the bottom. And it'll be nice, clear water on top. And as from here, they head over to the filters to where if we do have any suspended solids in our water, our filters will take care of any remaining solids that could be in our water. These would be our filters that come from the clarifier. The water comes up here into the filters. And as the water comes into the filters, it goes through the center channel where the water overflows into the baffle, so it's not one big rush of water coming in. And as the water seeps through the sand, it collects any suspended solids or anything, so we don't get any more solids going into our wastewater when we go to disinfect, and the sand traps all our solids from there. And after about four feet of water level inside these filters, it runs into what we call a backwash. And that backwash pushes fresh water back in through the sand and air uh, turbulates the sand up again. So it'll mix everything up so everything can settle down nice and cleanly again. And after the filters here, it runs over to our UV system where it disinfects the rest of the wastewater. My name is Kelleher Cowden. I'm a grade three senior treatment plant operator here at UC Davis. Um, this is the, the UV, UV disinfection system. Um, this treats all the, all the wastewater from campus um, that gets discharged into Pewter Creek. We have our, our filtered water, treated uh, wastewater flowing through these channels. Each one of these channels has four banks. Each bank has 18 modules. Each module has eight lamps. Um, and they're all uh, emitting a UV, UV uh, light that, that uh, kills uh, pathogens, bacteria, and viruses in the wastewater. This is a bank that we use to disinfect the wastewater. It's got 18 modules. Each module's got uh, eight lamps. 
Um, and we have four of these banks per channel, three channels for the disinfection of the wastewater. Usually we only use one at a time. During storms we might be, able, might be used two. Um, it kind of dictates off how much um, um, uh, UV transmittance through the wastewater. Um, kind of calculated through, through a computer tells us how, much, how many banks uh, we should be running at one time. Um, so every, we pull each one of these out every month, clean every lamp, we, uh, we dip them in an acid bath solution, uh, rinse back off and put back into the channel. And, and uh, uh, so we're constantly working on modules, lamps and, and, uh, and ballasts in these disinfection units. So after, after all the wastewater is disinfected, it gets pumped with these pumps here uh, down all the way to, to uh, Pewter Creek. Hi, my name is Courtney Doss. I'm an engineer with the utilities department. Um, I'm here to show you one of our discharge locations for the treated effluent from the wastewater treatment plant. Um, this is the Arboretum. Um, I'm sure many of you all enjoy walking around here. Um, this is uh, one of our, our the main discharge locations for the wastewater treatment plant. We enjoy using this location um, because it really improves the water quality for the Arboretum. Um, Arboretum is primarily a stormwater discharge for the campus, so there is an inflow of water during the summer or during the non-rainy season. So having this wastewater, this treated effluent, this high quality water come into the Arboretum really improves the water quality for the, um, the fish and the other animals that use this water and for those of us that like in, uh, walking around in this area and seeing the water be nice and clear like it is. You can see it coming out of here, um, that really high quality water there. So as you see, this is our empty clarifier we do not have in service right now. And the collector arm down there that goes around the bottom of it and picks up our sludge from the bottom that returns it back to the oxidation ditch. It's probably about 15 feet down. And our center baffle there that settles any, any heavy solids. And then our weirs that the clear water flows over. The average daily flow designed for this plant is 3.2 million gallons per day. When I first started, we processed about 1.9 million gallons a day. After the drought uh, a few years ago and water conservation started at, on campus, we dropped down to about 1.5 million gallons a day. Due, the, due to the pandemic and the students being gone long term, we've actually dropped down to 1.1 million gallons a day which is actually a challenge for us to keep our processes alive and running. But we've managed and we continue to run. All right, we're here at the thermal energy storage plant. Um, this is where there's some of the cooling towers for the, that makes the um, campus cooling water for our cooling water loop. Um, here we have one of our uses of recycled water that comes from our treated effluent from the wastewater treatment plant. You can see this uh, pipeline here with the purple markings. It says recycled water, do not drink. Um, and that's used here um, since 2013. And that's used instead of domestic water. So we get to be able to use recycled water to offset some domestic water use here at these cooling towers. Good morning, my name is Christina Felton. I'm the lab manager at the UC Davis wastewater treatment plant. Um, this is our small laboratory. We run regulatory tests for the wastewater plant. Um, we report all of our results to the state, so we have to make sure that all of the tests that get done uh, follow all the limits that are given by the state uh, in order to maintain our work. Um, we do a lot of our uh, wet chemistry in this building. And on this side, we do our micro testing, which is for the drinking water group. Here we have all of 
of the, we test all of the drinking water, domestic water. So say example, uh, the drinking water fountains, the faucets, the showers, all of that water has to be tested in order for, to make sure that, you know, our clients, the students, the staff, uh, they are, they don't get contaminated water. So we do a lot of our micro stuff here. Um, we test, for anyone who knows, this is multiple to fermentation. Uh, we uh, do it weekly, uh, make sure that we don't have any uh, E. coli, so we test very well on our water, our treated water. And this is for our drinking water, we do a lot of uh, QC on our water to make sure that everything is done correctly. Um, so this is it, it's a very small lab, but we do a lot. Um, we make sure that the campus is working because if by any chance we fail any of our drinking water or our wastewater uh, samples, then we can no longer function and we can no longer provide um, water, to have, water to our clients. So, um, you're welcome to stop by anytime you want, just give us a call or send us an email and we are happy to give you a little tour or you can check out any of our tests that we do here or you can even share with us if you're interested in wastewater. We have a building to your, to my left, called the MCC, which is called the Motor Control Center. This is where all the electricity that feeds all the equipment is uh, housed, as well as what we call our PLC, our Programmable Logic Controller, which controls all the equipment. We also have our generator. Our generator can run the entire plant 24 hours a day, as long as we have enough diesel fuel to operate the generator. Over here, we have our chemical area. Most of the equipment at the chemical area has been discontinued. We actually only run two chemicals at this time. We run our polymer, which were required by state, and we also run caustic as necessary to uh, control our alkalinity and our oxidation ditch. What I'm gonna talk about next is our sludge and what we do with our sludge each year. The wastewater treatment plant is kind of like a human body. As humans, we eat, we process the food, but we have to waste, whether it be urine or poop. The wastewater treatment plant is the same thing. It brings in raw wastewater, processes it. Our effluent is our urine, and our poop is what we call our waste. The waste comes from what we call waste activated sludge. Each day, our laboratory calculates how much waste we have to remove out of the system. Usually, when the students are here, it's about 60,000 gallons a day of waste, of waste activated sludge that we have to remove. Our waste activated sludge is sent out on a daily basis out to what we call the sludge stabilization basins, which is right where I'm pointing out on the other side of this levee. There it sits from the months of October through April. Then during May, we actually pump using a dredge, which is also located in the, in the basin, into each of these three drying beds. We fill each drying bed up about two feet of sludge. We let it dry and we actually mix it with a tractor, with a skid steer for about four to five weeks. After that, we pile it up and we send it over to Yolo County Landfill where they use it to top the cells of, their, of the landfill. We do this uh, usually on an annual basis. We usually get about 330 dry tons of sludge that we send out to the landfill. During this, the pandemic, we're kind of going to probably cut that volume in half to probably, I'm guessing, about 150 dry tons. And that's it. That's all I have to say about the sludge. Thanks for coming.